Hi, my name is uh, J.C. Bryant. I'm a local minister here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, professionally, I'm a graphic designer. I'm an artist. Um, this particular instance took place in Pickens County. Um, it's not a city. Uh, it's an unincorporated area. Uh, I think it's called Liberty. It's kind of up past the coal fire area. It's on your way to the Mississippi state line. So uh, I was a single dad at the time. I had my daughters with me. I'm going to say because I had them with me and it wasn't a weekend. I'm pretty sure it wasn't a weekend. We were visiting my mother's house. So I'm going to say it was in the summer because school was out. So that's going to be somewhere between, you know, June, July, August, somewhere in that area. I know that there was foliage on the trees. So that definitely tells me that it had to be summertime, that it wasn't um, fall or anything like that. It wasn't winter. Um, basically, to give you around what time it would have been, uh, at the time, that was my youngest daughter, uh, Abigail, and she was born in the year 2000. So she would have probably been around six or seven. So I'm going to say it was 2008 somewhere around that time, give or take a year. Um, where my mother lived at at the time there, my family, uh, the old homestead, it's the highest point in Pickens County as far as elevation goes. So it's always really cool up there. There's always a nice breeze up there. And um, they had cleared off the area up on the hill where the homestead was at. And then there was an old grist mill they had converted into a shop. I had helped my father do that. From there on out, it was pretty much just a really well wooded area. Uh, we shared the back end of that land with my brother-in-law at the time, and he had a green field cleared off where he would hunt. Um, deer were fairly plentiful there. Um, there was some point back then where mom had had a couple of pets go missing, and she was of a mind that it was a large cat. Uh, she had once or twice seen a, a, a print that she was convinced with a large cat. And I think the university sent somebody down around that time to look and see if they could find evidence of a large cat. So with the thought in mind that there might be some large cats in the area, and you know, when I say large cat, I'm meaning mountain lion, cougar, around the such. People will tell you that those things aren't down in Alabama, but those of us that live down here, we know better. Um, with that being said, it, it makes you use a little caution when you're out in the woods and, and things like that. Always been that way. Had my daughters with me that day. My dad had cut a, a, a clearing, a trail where you could go down and around into the back onto the green field that my brother-in-law had. So we really just spent the day with no abandon, riding the mower back and forth up through there. Uh, doing the things I did with them, telling them this is a sweet gum tree, this is a mimosa tree, teaching them about leaves and things. And it was getting toward the end of the day. We were standing in the yard, which is the clear part, the grass, the actual yard, looking toward the woods at no particular thing. And that's when I saw it. And, you know, being an artist, I've always been able to pick faces out of patterns, um, see faces in wood grains, things like that. It's not an uncommon thing. I think the human mind gravitates to things like that anyway um, for safety precaution reasons, you know, that you can recognize when something's off. But it took me a minute for my brain to really tell me what I was seeing because it's not something that you see, you know, every day. And uh, I've always been a believer in, in uh, Bigfoot, uh, the Yeti, uh, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call them. Um, but I'd never seen one. And I'm convinced that's what I saw that day. But it was um, above eye level with me. This is the part that's going to get you. I'm only 5'9". It was above eye level with me. And people laugh when I tell them this, but the animal was squatted and he had a small sweet gum tree pulled down like over his 
head. So he had it in his hand and he had it pulled down and he was squatted. Now, um, as if he was taking a dump. I mean, I don't know any other way to say it. Now, I don't know that's what he was doing, but in hindsight, you know, you try to figure out why would he have the limb pulled over and why is he squatted? Because he was definitely hunched over, definitely squatted, and he was above eye level with me. And as soon as my brain clicked, which I'm sure was mere seconds, I felt a fear like I had never felt before. Uh, I immediately was like, he's after the kids. Like that's, that's just, it was instinctual. It went right into me. I immediately, both my daughters were beside me. They both saw it. They were young. They're older now, but they remember the day, not so much as what they saw, but they saw it. So I immediately put my hands back on them and I started backing us up toward the house. The house from where we were standing, the front door was probably 75 yards away. So I started backing up, backing up, backing up, and then I told them to run, you know, to the house. And they understood by my tone to get onto the house. So that's what they did. I never turned my back on it all the way up until I found myself to the rail of the porch, up into the house of the porch, at which point I tried to get my mother because I wanted her to come to the door so I could show her, you know. And then by the time we do that, it's gone. So um, it wasn't dusk. It wasn't super late in the day. It wasn't a trick of the eye. I'm very confident in what I saw because, like I said, it was everything was green and foliage. And this this creature was black. Yeah. Um, not brown, not gray. He didn't have glowing red eyes. Um, in fact, I, I hear people say things like, well, you get this awful musky smell. And uh, I've smelled things before that probably was something like, but there was no smell that day. I didn't smell anything. It didn't growl. Um, it didn't approach me or, you know, it looked dead at me. We, we were looking at each other. Um, but like I said, the, the porch, the door was probably 75 yards in the rear of me. So I would judge that the creature was probably 50 to 70 yards away from me as well in the front. So not close enough that I felt like I was in super immediate danger, but once your brain tells you that what you're seeing is what you're seeing, we don't have a lot of evidence. They might be really fast. They might be, you know, I knew we had to get out of there. We're going to just stand there and keep looking. But I did. I, I've never, I don't know that I have felt fear like that. Um, it's, it's all over you. Like it's instinctively you want to protect your kids. You know, there was no fascination in terms of, oh, let me watch this. Let me, you know, we didn't have, iPhones were just now coming out you didn't have a device that you could reach in your pocket and grab. And even if you did, we just weren't programmed that way yet. You know, yeah. the Zeke guys hadn't got us that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's it in a nutshell, man. I, he was, he was definitely hunched over. Um, one leg sort of extended the other completely, you know, bent at the knee branch pulled down and uh i knew if he's above eye level with me in that position um he's a giant <laughs> yeah up, yeah and because he was in the trees i'm assuming it's all shadows right well yes and no let me tell you about that area there we had at one time cleared sort of halfway cleared that area out. My father hated sweet gum trees. He hated mimosa trees. Um, that's kind of why you heard me mention them a few times. He would go through with the chainsaw and if he saw a sweet gum or a mimosa, it had to come out. So all the growth that was in there was fairly young growth. Um, at this point, my father had already passed away 
and stuff was growing back from where we had cleared it years ago, you know, back when we had first uh, cleared off that property. So I would say the gum tree that I'm referencing was probably 16 feet tall, like, you know, still skinny, very skinny. Um, there was a lot of light coming down into the area. It, it wasn't like a deciduous forest. Now back, back behind the home on down where the greenfield and stuff is everything's really high and grown up full grown trees things of that nature but this particular area uh, i guess you'd say it was a little more growth than a thicket you know but there but um so he stood out like he, he stood out like a sore thumb now he might not have thought he was standing out like yeah. that but that's what shocked me because green, 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 big black creature. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so there was some sunlight on him. He had yes. some sunlight on him. Well, yeah, he had the tree pulled down, of course, which yeah. when I say tree, it's a sapling or whatnot. But yeah, there was light in the area, light shining down. Um, I can't go into detail and go like his face was lit and things like that because he was black. Yeah. Um, I didn't see like, you know, like you see on the ape flesh and hair and, or if you imagine a werewolf when people portray werewolves, they have hair and a face. Uh, it was just all black. And I saw eyes. I mean, they weren't glowing or anything like that, but, um, yeah were, were the eyes black i saw the whites of the eyes they could have been black they could have been brown um they could have been red but they weren't glowing you know what i mean they weren't right. um sometimes you hear people say well their eyes were glowing red uh, and that might have been because they see them at night and they hit them with a light and catch right. them in a light or something um this wasn't the case um I'm one, i wonder because there was some sunlight hitting it at, at that distance which again you're talking about 75 yards yeah um that's a good distance the eyes are big uh usually you don't get a lot of people that see the whites of the eyes because there's usually solid black right. or what have you now, it was definitely quite in the eyes. And, and you know, now that you put it into perspective, and I'm thinking about the size of a football field, and a football field is 100 yards. So that would be what – it was closer than that. So it was probably somewhere between 40 and 50 yards. Yeah, half um, Yeah, it was much closer seeing it that way. And, and I thought about going and taking you a picture. Mother sold the home place. And she moved over here to Tuscaloosa where we live now. But uh, the gentleman that purchased the place is a really nice guy. Right. And I, I thought about going by and saying, hey, have you ever heard anything? You ever seen anything? But yeah. um, a lot of people up in the area have heard, you know, I think one of the reasons that we probably didn't see anything that often back then was my father uh, was a lawman and he had a, a drug dog that he had in a kennel in that very area. And it probably kept things away. Um, you know, after after father passed away, you know, the, the 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 property, the ownership of the dog went back to the sheriff's department. So, right. but yes, I know for a fact during that time she lost about three pets. Uh, I don't know how many cats, but three dogs. Yeah. Neha, not Chihuahua, you know, Neha dogs. Um, and that's why she was convinced that it had to be a cat responsible. And it could have been. I mean, the university thought enough of the photograph that she took of the of the footprint of the paw that they sent someone down to investigate it. Um, but I never saw a cat. Yeah. And I've never seen a – I lived in West Virginia for about two years. And did an awful lot of spelunking in hopes, like an idiot, that I would see yeah. Bigfoot or Sasquatch, you know. 
Um, but you I know, never did. I was thinking back about the distance and I've interviewed countless people. I've also been to locations where we took measurements and unless, unless you play golf, people, it's hard to judge distance accurately. Yes. Um, you know, especially as something traumatic like that and something that catches you off guard, you're not really thinking about distance at the time. You're just looking at the creature and sometimes the creature is much bigger and right. it appears to be um, closer and it might've been farther away. You know, it, it the size throws it off. Too. Well, I guess if, if I had been in a location somewhere I wasn't familiar with, I'd probably be even more off. Um, but it being our property and me in my mind, having cut the grass and, you know, worked landscape to stuff. Yeah. Um, and I could still be off, like you said, because I, I just knew that, my brain told me really quick, like, you know, th whatever this is you're looking at is hunched over. And I, you know, you automatically, your brain says that's got the features of a man. I mean, there was two legs, two arms, a head, shoulders. Um, and then that's when I realized, what's he doing? You know, what's his, you know, who's up here? What's he doing? And, and then you're like, boom, you know, this guy's towering over me, hunched mm -hmm. over. <laughs> this ain't some guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so you, you just mentioned shoulders. Yes. And a lot of things uh, that I ask regarding bear mis misidentification, bears don't have shoulders. You don't see three to foot, four foot wide shoulders. On a Bigfoot, they've got three to four foot wide shoulders. Right. And, and we have we have heard of bears in Alabama, even black bears. Um, even throughout history, there's photographs of people who have, hunted and killed black bears but this wasn't a, this wasn't a bear i've seen bears yeah. uh, this i mean he you could see like he was pulling the branch you know right. down over him um it was obvious to me that it was well you don't yeah the term manly doesn't fit but yeah i know but, you know it, right it was more mammal than whatever than a bear yeah humanoid right i like to use yes. the word humanoid meaning it's got shoulders legs arms you know a head no muzzle it's hard to tell looking direct, directly at it but a lot of times you can tell the difference between a bear and a bigfoot because bigfoots have flat faces bears have snouts right and there was no snout from what i could see but he didn't turn his head he locked yeah. he locked gaze with me yeah um and i just knew like i said i just knew we'd been out there all day and mm -hmm. i think he was after the girls yeah or to be honest um <laughs> i tell people that kids children make good bait because bigfoots are curious really not really harmful but they like to observe women, children, maybe because they're non-threatening, innocent, high voices. Uh, men, grown grown men, you know, tend to be a little bit more intimidating. We tend to hunt more. Um, so well, I, I'm going to disagree with you there, but that's okay. We can agree to disagree and and still have a kinship and a friendship. But yeah. I, I. I have my own theory on Bigfoots and uh, Yeti and Sasquatches, and um, I think they were wanting a meal, and yeah. um, I fully believe that. And I believe that um, to some degree they might even be cannibalistic. But uh, with that being said, that that's just my initial thought and fear at that moment, you know. Yeah. And um, so I had to get them out of there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's that's an instinct, you know. You have a large creature like that, um, but I'll I'll just let you know on my research. I've done it for three decades in Kentucky. I've yeah. interviewed well over five hundred witnesses, right. close encounters, daytime, just like yours, close encounters, even closer than that. And the Bigfoot's never hurt the witness. 
the big well, of course, yeah, dead, dead people can't can't tell you anything well that's true but uh yeah. there's not many that i know of right except well, I've, I've, I've done quite a bit of research too i just turned 50 and i've done quite a bit of research not a specialization like yourself uh, but i know a lot of people in the field um talked a lot with david politis and the, the missing 411 and some connections i think that are there within the national parks uh, i think the bigfoot and stuff are troglodytes i think that's why you don't see a lot of evidence of them in dens and things like that i think they're underground um and i know different people feel different about that but that that's my theory is that they live underground uh, they have a road system, highway system, traveling system, um, if you will, maybe something even similar to like uh, what ants do. But I think the reason we don't find any any remains or anything is I think they have a system where they handle that. You know, they take care of that. And I um, I, I just feel like there, there there is evidence of people who were attacked um uh, there's a really good one about a young lady that was kidnapped and held for a while and uh escaped that's a very interesting read and an interesting topic but um i would like to think that you're exactly right i would like to think that it's a missing link you know and it's something that could be addressed and found out and people will be validated for their thoughts and their people like you that put a lot of work, you know, into researching um, the cryptozoology in general. Yeah, I um, I based I based my beliefs or theories off all the witnesses that I've interviewed that I sure. personally interviewed, right. and I don't have I don't have one report in Kentucky of them hurting hurting the witness, and I'm talking they had they had the opportunity. They could have grabbed them. They could have killed sure. them. The witness was alone with this creature, and the you know, and the Bigfoot did not hurt them. Now, I, I will say that they're like I think they're like people, and they have different temperaments. And yeah, you might get a bad one every now and then, but I would say generally speaking, in Kentucky, um, they're more or less curious. They're not out for flesh and blood, so to speak. Um, that's just my beliefs on my research yeah, yeah of course of course but but we don't know you know and it's always better to be cautious uh, right just in case <laughs> well the one thing back to the eyes i was thinking about thinking about something when he said the whites of the eyes you know they have large eyes and i do believe they reflect it's eye shine it's not eye glow some researchers believe they emit a light actually <laughs> Um, and I don't think that I think they're just giant yeah. eyes, uh, you know, huge pupils. They can see at night. They're nocturnal and they reflect a lot more light than usual. I'm curious on your encounter, if you saw some white, some gleam, I wonder if that's the sun or some light kind of reflect. No, no, it wasn't the sun because when I say the area is lit, you know, I, I'm the trees aren't very tall as far as trees go, you know, uh, 14, 15 feet to the top, because uh, this is what, you, it was young growth, um, but it wasn't a forest. Like when you go into a forest and you've got a, a, an overhead, you get light comes down in between the leaves. It's not that kind of deal. That It wasn't that thick and that, that well grown because it had just grown out from not long ago being thinned out and cleared. Um, but he did have the tree pulled down, covering himself over his head. So there wasn't light on him where I could make out features and tell you, oh, he had a six pack. And, you know, you should have saw his bicep. I couldn't see all that. Yeah. But I could see the whites in his, I could see the whites of his eyes. Now, they weren't, it's like they weren't glowing, you know, um, they weren't emitting light, but I could see the whites in his eyes I, okay. see his I was thinking more like a shine like a little bit of a, a glimmer of a shine like a gleam um 
possibly coming from well i mean place. about like you would in any kind of animal or any other human that you, you know you would that's why i was able to know that it i was looking at eyeballs you know what i mean yeah. like I could, yeah. but um no i mean i wasn't i wasn't close enough for to to say that i saw the wetness of his eyeballs but i right. saw the, the whites of his eyes yeah know? so after this happened did you go looking for it or did you tell anybody yeah i mean i've never been one to shy away from things that i've seen and my family knows that about me so i guess i'm the black sheep of the family but you know i wanted my mother to know because she was a widow up there alone i wanted her to be aware and i wanted my sisters who had children that would be going up there i wanted them to be aware you know and then i wanted my brother-in-law who was up there hunting definitely wanted him to know so he keep his eyes out for it but now i didn't go up there and look for him or anything like that that wasn't in my purview at the time um to be honest with you i really don't think we went back up there a lot in fact after that in that sort of a capacity to uh, walk around in the yard and it it was a complete turnoff for me in, in that aspect um and then we wound up moving to me and the girls moved moved back to tuscaloosa so that's about a 45 minute drive yeah you know now you're you said your girls saw it yes right? did they have questions later about it no not really i mean they they knew what they saw they know what I, they knew what i saw and they were already familiar with the topic of bigfoot you know had seen harry and the hendersons and they um you know being a single dad i may have talked to them too much at that time about things that i probably shouldn't even talk to them about in in terms of um the world and ways of the world and bigfoot and you know conspiracy type stuff um but they turned out pretty good so yeah that's good I was, but, uh, but yeah you know I, it was just me and them and and i told them what i saw and they knew what they saw they saw it uh even though we can't tell you yeah that's a bigfoot yeah that's a sasquatch because we don't have we don't have one photograph to compare it to yeah. but but going off the consensus of what people have said they've seen and the way media has or the Zabruder films, you know, it, it's, that's what I saw. Yeah. And that's the closest thing I can describe it to is the Zabruder film, except in, in that film, you see a lot of white in the face, like, like there's flesh, if you will. I didn't see any of that. I saw all black. Yeah. So, um, on the, the hair, was it long hair short hair i couldn't tell you it was just black yeah um i couldn't tell you if it was matted or long or um i mean i feel like parts of my brain right now i, I can see it all over again like i'm standing there like i don't think i will ever forget it but I just can't I can't tell whether it was long hair or short hair or yeah. you know I um but of all the images or supposed images and pictures that I've seen the Zabruder film jumps out and then I think about a year ago somebody shared a picture where somebody had zoomed in to a tree and got like a picture of the face like in between a couple of tree branches or whatever mm -hmm. and the skin was black right that's that's where my brain goes because yeah. everything was black so I, you know like a north american ape or something yeah. like that you know I, I could when we go to the zoo and i see the gorilla you know at the zoo and the gorilla stands up and i'm my brain goes you know it could be something like that it could be just a, a type of ape we haven't discovered living in north america but of course i know they live more than just 
North America, but um, but no, I couldn't tell if it was long hair or short hair. So, just by coincidence, strictly coincidence, I've got a friend here in Kentucky that's looking to buy a Bigfoot suit. He's actually owned a cheap one. He uh, uses uses it for pr promotions in his restaurant, yeah. and then he ordered ordered another one offline, and it came to him, and it wasn't that great. And I told him, I've got a friend in Kentucky that makes Bigfoot suits. Oh, wow. He All doesn't right. make a lot of them. They're expensive. And I was sending him the picture just a few hours ago um, about this suit. I've got it on my phone. I'm going to show you this because it kind of reminds me. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm going to show you if you can see this. Can oh, yeah. Yeah, I see it. I don't know if it's coming through or not. It's coming through. I see it. See how it's black? The face is black? Yeah, most certainly. And the chest. And uh, Yeah, that's it's, really cool. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, but I can never own one being a researcher. You know, if I somebody finds out that I got a Bigfoot costume right. in the trunk of my car, I'm, I'm done for. Well, that's, um, we, we stopped off in Georgia uh expedition bigfoot there the museum and um somebody had made a statue mm -hmm. with with realistic fur and um and i feel like the height is right on that one yeah right. i don't know if you've been there uh, but yeah. It, huh yes I, I have. yeah the height I, I feel like the height would be right just compared to what i saw that day but I'm sure they come in varying degrees of high yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I I tell people that all the time. Um, they're not born eight feet tall. Right. <laughs> and I do believe they're a hominid. They have families. They reproduce. I'm more flesh I, I feel and blood that way yes. type. Um, uh, that, but, well, um, I think you've covered everything. Can you tell me one last time? The city and state. Yeah, it was in, uh, well, the closest city is going to be Reform, Alabama, R-E-F-O-R-M. Okay. And you're on Highway 82, so you go out of Reform like you're headed to Columbus, Mississippi. And uh, this community is called Liberty. It's okay. just up past Coal Fire, C-O-A-L-F-I-R-E, and it's the highest elevation in Pickens County. In fact, the home place there, the hill is the highest elevation where we saw it at. That's the highest elevation in Pickens County. Okay. And um, that's it. Um, now, I've heard other people throughout the county have seen things in Pickens County. And Pickens County has its own weird quirks anyway. It's famous for a few, a few different things. Okay. Um, facing the courthouse window is one of the biggest ones there, too. The courthouse uh, a man was struck by lightning he says he was innocent he screamed into the night henry wells and the lightning bolt burned his face into the pane of glass <laughs> and it it never goes away now yeah. i can i can say as a child i was up in the courthouse because my grandfather was a chief deputy sheriff and looking out of that window it's clear but when you're down on the ground and look up and the window has been replaced a few times but that's one of the things uh, we've had a few Bigfoot sightings. There's some other stuff. It's a nice place to visit if you ever yeah. want to go, go through. Yeah. Um, we live in Tuscaloosa now, but we go back to visit quite a bit. And down at my in-laws, uh, my son swears he hears them out yelping and knocking trees. And um, But we believe. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you're, you're actually, a, I like to call, a knower. <laughs> yeah. You, I haven't a doubt it. in my mind, brother. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a great story. I really appreciate your time. Sure. And uh, taking, you know, sharing all the details. And I'm what I hope is people see this. And when I put the county and the state and city and the other people will come forward and Make say, hey, up. you know, I saw one as well in that same county around that same time frame. 
yeah, if you guys, you're watching this and you've got a story to tell and you've seen something in that area, reach out and let him know about it. I mean, uh, they take this serious. They're trying to get information together to see if they can discover something. And it'd be great to be a part of it. Although, I hope I never see one again. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're in, in your car. Yeah, well, yeah, in my car. Yeah. Doing 80. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. All right. but I appreciate you, man. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right. You have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.